So I'm going to, when I say, speak in the first person, that's Claudia speaking. John and I have made a half dozen of these five minute pieces. We usually riff off a video that is shown again and again in order to write into the backstory. This piece is framed around the drive of two men who have been incarcerated for 20 plus years. They went in at 18 and are 40 in the video. They are both making the drive to the halfway house having just been released after 20 years. This is their first look at the outside world. The historical footage is followed by the Rodney King beating and Katrina displaced folk in New Orleans at the Superdome. The music is Miles Davis, a clip from Miles Davis's So What off the album Kind of Blue. The other situation videos address 9-11, Zidane World Cup headbutt, and Katrina, etc. Claudia. Okay, after having that as sort of an added context, does anybody have any first thoughts on the video or what Ryan just told us or anything? Presumably, uh, John Lucas put together the, um, the video to one of Claudia's film, uh, one of her poems. And so, has she done a number of these poems yeah. that relate very specifically to the African American experience? And uh, I'm not, <laughs> I don't really have that much credibility talking about this, but um, she has, w w one of the things I was talking about was um, she did a video with John, or one of these projects with John in which um, uh, it's a video of that kind of um, famous World Cup moment when Zidane headbutts the last moment, but it slowed down to five minutes and so she writes like this poem kind of about, in this kind of internal, you know, not about World Cup, but kind of more about kind of um, this kind of internal, internalized thought process of like the African-American male and contemporary culture. And yeah, so. I mean, what really struck me was, um, you know, I wonder, totally ask Claudia, but um, the two men she's talking about, that's actually from one of John's, um, a documentary that John is making right now called Cooler Bandits, which is about four um, individuals who were incarcerated at 18, and the reason, you know, when you're asking whether or not it was a legit reason to be, you know, in prison for 20 years, it, it wasn't really. They had gone on this crime spree that was like non-violent, but there had been some robberies that they had done. But basically they became, this group of four um, boys kind of became famous in the fact that they hadn't been caught. And so kind of to, you know, prove a point, you know, it's kind of conjectural, but they, it, not really because the sentence they 
were the original sentence was totally you know this inordinate amount of time way beyond 20 years they got individually um it was like one i think a few of the individuals were sentenced for literally 500 years or something absurd it was something you know just to kind of like prove something but there was no one you know they it wasn't you know proportionate to what they'd done and so yeah that definitely and that's kind of what the documentary is exploring that space and exploring what it's like for them to, because now that a few of them are coming back, you know, making that transition back, you know, into the halfway house, into the, you know, into, you know, the quote unquote real world. Like, Just was I was just looking at it as a visual and audio, so I didn't have any of that context, and I wasn't even, I was kind of um, lulled by her voice and the image. So I really was looking at that space. I could feel that space, even though I didn't know, wasn't really keying in on, was this person incarcerated or anything. So to me, there was, um, if you were listening, keying in on that, I could see this very interesting kind of border that was... I thought done very beautifully in a way. Border. A border between this person looking out and these other events. So I thought that was very strong, that you could see there was some sort of displacement, but what is it? Um, I, didn't, I wasn't that concerned about where he was in it, because then there's another displacement there, right. socially and culturally. So I thought that was interesting. Um, how do you react to that when you haven't been in it, but you're expected to react to it? just be maybe because of a racial marker. So I thought that was kind of interesting visually. And I liked that it was soft, because everything else was so hard, the way it was filmed. There was a real contrast there, a real kind of beauty of the way it was filmed, but you knew that there was something else there. So I thought, that's what I took from it, not knowing anything about the piece. And that barrier is represented in the structure of the film itself. Yeah, because yeah. It's divided on many layers. Yeah. yeah, the barrier to me came up several times, I thought successfully without having to answer any of the questions or know the questions that you were posing. It was just kind of an outsider. Well, I actually didn't know the history. You didn't know? At all. Um, yes. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And then after that, I was like, yeah, me too. Yeah. I also found it interesting, again, I came here with Danielle and I didn't have a lot of knowledge of the context in which I was watching the film and the sound was a little hard to, to follow. However, I thought the idea that we were with someone who had just gotten out of prison and seeing the outside world with them for the first time, I thought that was really, as soon as, you, I believe you mentioned that in your reading or, or right afterwards, I instantly wanted to, I wish I had known that before I saw the film. Um, and I thought that was such an interesting idea to be with someone when they get out of confinement for 20 years and see the world. And um, I, for me, that really was like such an interesting aspect of the prison experience that I had never really given much thought to. So I thought that was really interesting as well. I also was struck by the um, the juxtaposition of the kind of the harshness of the situation and then the beauty of the landscape going by and kind of the lull of Claudia's voice and um, it's soft and, and, and low, but it's also sad and it just had like a real depth and it just made you feel the moment. And I also just, I loved sort of this vulnerability of of the young man just writing and just looking out the window and the sort of the the idea that w we could all be in that seat looking out that window and having that moment so um, I, I thought it was beautiful. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting was the fact that you know we were very much in tune with one person's experience and their loss 
um, and also the fact that they're African American, and then that being juxtaposed with um, a very specific and definite um, history of racism, you know, in this country, and looking at very specific markers, you know, the Rodney King, for example, the the handling ridiculous handling of Kachina and so on and so forth. So you had the very personal combined with this sort of more um, global experience for the injustices suffered by you know, African Americans in this country. And I, I thought that was really beautifully done because sometimes when you talk about things from a very personal perspective, um, they do communicate on a much more global level. And I think in this instance that came across very clear, clearly and succinctly. And that, um, that connects with that the Lynn Hinginian quote at the end. It's talking about how, of course, now I'm going to butcher it, but it was talking just about that, about how you know, the individual is often the mirror for these larger issues, you know. So. Well, I mean, I just, just I think Kira, Kira um, brought up the point about how you know, it's a very personal story, but it's very, the personal is very connected to the historical um, situation. And then your comment about the, 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 the quote taken about how the individual is actually more than an individual. It act, the individual represents the situation or the, the, the historical, political uh, context in which that person exists. And, and so I think that even not knowing necessarily the history of that individual person, I think the imagery and the, the, the poem really reflects, um, you know, the whole condition of, um, of um, American history and the American experience and that it was very um, poignant and it kind of, it really brings together this theme of this session which is isolation and connection so that even though one person's life is very, um, might be isolated in terms of experience, and um, but but it's so, you know, intimately connected to what's happening historically and politically. Okay. Well, I think it's time to wrap up the formal discussion and move on over to the coffee and tea and cookies. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you.